To any woman who wants to marry, my advice is marry a man who is capable of fasting, say the Benedictine monk. This is an interesting requirement when looking for a husband. At first, we might think that, of course, anyone can fast, but there are fasts and fasts. Fasting usually refers to giving up food, but it can also refer to saying no to other things, for example, someone can fast from social networks. Fasting of any kind is a no to say. However, it is always a no for some reason. We can say that it is a no rooted in a yes. The desire for bodily health or an elegant appearance are two yes that can inspire saying no to food. Another could be the desire for willpower that comes from repeatedly saying no to something I want. To think clearly about fasting, especially in the fast we most want to do, we need to think about why, the yes behind the no. Christians who begin the practice of fasting in Lent should ask themselves, why am I doing this? What exactly is the yes that is moving me here or, in any case, the yes that I want to move me here? Traditionally, there are several reasons why Christians fast. Two of them stand out because they are obviously linked to each other and firmly rooted in human experience. Fasting can curb the desire for lower things, and it can lift the mind to higher things. This last reason, which gives special importance to the first, should make us think. Clearly, not every fast lifts the mind to higher things. So what is required for fasting to bear this all-important fruit? The most obvious step is to recognize a reason and a fruit in this. I choose to base the no of my fast on the yes of turning to higher things. I could very easily start fasting just because I have to, and that fast can still bear good fruit. But it would be very different from fasting which is done consciously with higher things in view. Saint Thomas Aquinas is even more specific. Ad sublimia contemplanda to contemplate sublime things. Here is one thing that can break the monotony and pain of our fast and really bring it to life. Train the soul to see sublime things, love them and surrender to them. Saying no to things is not just anything, it's about saying no to what we want when we don't need to say no in order to divert our gaze to something else. With the motivation of love, this detour provides a broader view, and so our love grows. Our yes becomes firmer and deeper. Here it begins to make sense that the ability to fast is considered a kind of requirement for marriage. A man capable of fasting is a man capable of seeing and of loving. He put into practice what is at the heart of any real relationship whether with God or with other people. He learned to say no to himself, and in how many ways, some obvious, some not so obvious, must a man say no again and again in his life, all because of the most important sins, like that day when he says the big yes. Even when we are married, we can still become the man our wife wishes she had married, or the man she really wanted to marry. Whether she sees it clearly or not, whatever my state of life, I can still become a man capable of fasting. I owe it to others and to God, and in doing so, I will finally discover the man they know I can be.